Hello guys, so 2022 if you are giving your prelims, uh, we will have a new batch which will be batch number 3 because already we had a one year batch which started in June, then we did uh, in August which is 280 uh, day timetable, now again 222 days, okay, you have around 230 days now, so uh, this will start around August, uh, sorry October mid now, okay, October mid it will start and it will go till May 25, one day before your prelims, so it will be again a self-study plan and this video, I will put it as a separate video, mostly tomorrow day time, okay, today we have uh, some pending editorials, you know, September 30, Saturday episode I couldn't do and uh, today October 2nd is also there so two back-to-back -back editorial episodes will come today and this video explaining the course and the fee structure everything will come tomorrow okay and it will be same as the previous batch so if you have seen the batch 2 video or batch 1 video the fee structure will be same only the timetable is being changed and the number of tests also will be little lesser because you have lesser time okay and mostly the current affairs of older years that is what we will skim off the other uh, new current affairs and new subjects everything will be included in the uh, package that is a general idea so you can wait for the launch video uh, tomorrow okay so now if you uh, go to today's uh, hindu okay there are uh, various things to discuss let me just uh, take to the this thing okay so here uh, this is the today's editorial so if you see every article is important on september 30 like uh, for example this is the afspa so afspa if you see the news item is just one line that in manipur violence is there so afspa the armed forces uh, special protection act that is extended for another six months but that is not what i teach you right i give you the static part of it i give you the entire information about afspa so that prelims or mains any question comes you can answer and i will show you the previous year mains question also on afspa then here woman reservation in parliament is in discussion so in police system also the 33 percentage women should we need it or not that is the uh, thing which uh, the author is asking okay and then uh, we have this uh, south china sea south china sea you know china tries to occupy all the lands there so they have fight with philippines vietnam almost every country there with japan so international uh, tribunals have also ruled against china still china doesn't listen to anyone so here philippines uh, change of government is there and there the new person is uh, fighting back against china so that one slide i'll show you okay then here again global dispute settlement already dispute related we have discussed the uh, uh, arbitration mediation and uh, reconciliation there are many many ways of uh, uh, settling the disputes outside your court so that in very detailed fashion i have done if you have not seen it is your loss okay because uh, vaisha is editorial don't think it is just a news coverage it is going to cover your mains topic okay so one editorial is equal to four mains classes for you because four articles are being discussed so this one if you go to a coaching class we have no idea when you will get those classes who different different teachers will be taking here i will do it for you each day every main topic and including the prelims factor of that article is covered free of cost the more you delay the more you ignore our previous episodes and then or randomly watch these editorials and all you will regret after the exam okay i can tell with full confidence because i am the one reading it and making the content and i know okay we have been analyzing upsc papers since last 15 years we know what all upsc ask so please try to uh, take these things seriously and uh, do it every day okay so this global dispute settlement also what is a new issue uh, and the new angle to it that also i will explain and the right side is uh, ground zero ground zero not required but four other articles i will discuss and in full country of india i am sure we are the only one who discuss all the four articles okay you can go and check any editorial video of india in this country in youtube free i am telling paid maybe i don't know versions are there free only we are the ones who is doing okay so we will do this in detail first itself that south china sea simple one uh, there was the president, uh, this uh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, and now there is this uh, Marcos Jr. Okay, so that is the difference in approach. The former president in Philippines was like, okay, like playing down the tensions with China and uh, Manila is the capital. Okay, Manila is the capital of Philippines. So they got favorable ruling from international tribunal also against uh, Beijing's uh, China's claims and all, but still uh, he was not very aggressive. He was okay, okay, and he was not fighting back. The new person has a different approach. He's naming and shaming China in every occasion, and he's uh, going with like more relation with Washington, that is US and um, conducting military exercises uh, uh, with USA in the South China Sea. So like that, many, many things like coastal guards uh, and vessels and everything now USA can bring here. They have given that freedom in their waters. So this will obviously anger China. So uh, uh, a very uh, reserved approach and a very aggressive approach in the change of precedence. That is the main thing. Recent event what happened, what is the news is covering is some uh, floating barrier was set up by China in the South China Sea around the Scarborough Shoal. Okay, the Scarborough Shoal, if now UPC ask you, okay, you have to tell this is in the South China Sea. Okay, map also I have shown multiple times when I explained the South China Sea in our test series also there. So Scarborough 
sh uh, shore is a small island which uh, where they put 300 meter floating barrier that uh, these people went to have went and removed so obviously china got angry and they are now fighting with each other okay in this area they are fighting with each other on who will uh, occupy that because it's a big uh, like rich lagoon where uh, uh, the resources okay the minerals or the fishing resource everything is too much there so that is why they are fighting for it this is the only thing in that article the article number 1 we have covered now okay now we have very important articles like you would have seen in the thumbnail uh, what is afspa and more women in indian police do we need or not these two are the uh, lengthy articles and then we have the dispute settlement also that will be easy because i have uh, done the research and basic static is already covered for you so afspa if you see 2015 a detailed mains question came human rights activist constantly highlight the fact that the armed forces special powers act okay afspa uh, 1958 is a draconian act leading to cases of human rights abuses by security forces what sections of us as far opposed by the activist critically evaluate the requirement and reference to the view held by the apex court meaning supreme court so this after the end of this article you yourself will be able to write this and this is what you want right this is what you expect when you go and join any coaching or you learn from some teacher this is what you want so others will take uh, uh, 40000 50000 60000 for at least like gs1 paper alone gs2 paper alone like that i can also do and we will have plans also in future if you people are not watching these free initiatives i will also have to move to that model and launch classes okay you would have already seen 2025 a very uh, big batch we have already launched okay 2025 test series which will have uh, 575 day time table uh, prelims plus mains and an add on version we have mentioned there about video classes which i will be taking in a paid version okay so that coaching thing which you people expect that also will come in the future days editorial also will continue free of cost depending on how many people are watching and supporting okay so supporting means i expect by this time you have liked or commented uh, below so please do that okay if you have not done at least now uh, put a like okay so now off spa let me just take back to that uh, question so here uh, so negatives is what is being asked what is the like critically do what is the thing which you are opposing draconian act it's full negative but in case you have to tell the positive about afspa some points i have put in the starting itself okay like significant improvement in the security situation in northeastern states so i think except the mizoram almost everywhere many years uh, this thing has been there afspa so what it is and i'll teach you so here compared to year 2014 there is reduction of 76 percentage in the extremist incidents in, uh, in the year 2022 similarly the death of security personnel and civilians have come down by 90% and 97% respectively then uh, several peace accords have been implemented in the northeastern state you would have seen like central government and the state or central government and the state and the students union like the tripartite bilateral many many treaties are getting signed more than 7000 insurgents like uh, uh, came and surrendered that we are not we don't want to do this like that in the same maoist issue when you discuss lwe issue left wing extremism which is again part of your gs3 mains there are also many like lot of improvement has come in the uh, that red area which we in chatisgarh orissa that that area we have this red zone okay where uh, this uh, L, uh, maoist area was there that also has it's not over it will never get over in india these kind of things will never get over but it is reduced kashmir you take kashmir issue also the way stone pelting and many things were at, uh, like attacking army and number of terrorist activities everything has reduced at least internally okay outside this uh, pakistan coming inside will still continue because they have no other job they are qualified to do that they will obviously do that like we are qualified to send something to uh, mars or moon we will do that they are qualified to simply cross the border they will do that okay so you don't have to worry about that it will continue but we in our country we are cleaning up things and gradually it will end also so now this is an opening of our spa So I'll teach you all the static before going to the today's news item where Manipur uh, it has been like little bit change has happened there. So now AFSPA is something where unfettered power or kind of unlimited power is given to the armed forces and the Central Armed Police Forces (CAPF) uh, deployed in the disturbed areas. So what is disturbed area? That full thing I will teach you. But before that, we will see the proper definition. That is to kill anyone acting in contravention of law, arrest and search any premises without a warrant, and then. Uh, they have the protection also from any legal su suit so this is the summary of what it is afspa is there in a state or a place means it can be full state or it can be a portion of the state also then army or capf officers they have full freedom there they can shoot anyone they can kill no need of any arrest warrant or shooting order nothing if you feel somebody is doing something wrong immediately you can shoot them kill them arrest them check them search them anything you can do and after doing all this also you will not be persecuted by the law because you have given the free hand to do this okay so that when in extreme conditions it is done mostly in the northeast states and in the jammu and kashmir okay 
so it is a british era kind of legislation from that time it is there uh, during the quit india movement britishers tried this kind of like freedom they gave to the uh, police to control the freedom fighters and all so we adopted that in 1947 uh, in the form of four ordinance okay it was issued four ordinance came 1948 it was replaced by an act okay ordinance is something like when parliament is not in session the president or governor them, themselves can pass the law that is called ordinance okay later then when they come in session they will make it an act that is what happened in 1948 they made it an act afspa act and it is still the new act, uh, the same act only. Okay, it's not like replaced or something. So, uh, the initially it was called Armed Forces Assam and Manipur Special Powers Act 1950-1958 because that was the area where we had issues. Okay, there was this Nagas problem and all. That was one of the first issue uh, which they had to uh, take up also that time. Okay, in Naga, Nagas and the, after that it extended. After that it went to Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Mizoram, uh, Nagaland. Everywhere it extended. Okay, in 1972 it was amended. Uh, to declare an area as disturbed were conferred concurrently upon the central government along with the state. Meaning initially it was I think only with the central government who will declare this. 1972 center or the state governor he can also tell like this is a disturbed area. So uh, implement ASPA. Okay. Meaning they will tell then center will send the army. So that is the uh, step uh, history of timeline. Okay. And all the states are there, Northeast, Jammu Kashmir, everybody, it was, it, it was there. But where it is completely revoked is Tripura, it was completely revoked in 2015. Meghalaya, it was completely revoked in 2018. So, this is for your prelims. That days also in 2015, 18 and all, I, I only took the class. That time also I have explained this as part of current affairs. Okay. So, 27 years in Meghalaya, it was there and 2018, finally it was there and now it is kind of peaceful. Okay. March 2023 news was there that center has decided to further reduce the jurisdiction of disturbed area under the ASPA in Assam, Nagaland and Manipur. Okay, so like the time to time you will keep seeing this that that each time I teach it also the static part. So, uh, these uh, places except for some Imphal constituencies and all uh, ASPA was there, Arunachal Pradesh except for these places uh, ASPA was there, Jammu and Kashmir it was there. So, these are as a I'm just telling you it can be full state or it can be region that depends on where the issues are going or maybe the uh, center's preference also will happen that is what in today's article we'll discuss okay so now what is a disturbed area this is the static another where prelims question can come disturbed area is one which is declared by notification under section 3 of the AFSPA section 3 empowers the governor of a state or administrator of a UT to issue an official notification in the Gazette of India telling like this is a dis uh, disturbed area, there is a problem here. So, the center has authority to send the armed forces for civilian aid. The state or the central government consider those areas as disturbed by reason of differences or dispute between members of different religion, race, language, regional group, caste, community. Anything it is, if there is difference between the civilians, their people there, they are fighting there, anything is there. If it is becoming like going out of hand, you cannot control without army, then governor or the center, they can uh, declare it as a disturbed area and then center will send the army. So, disturbed area and uh, uh, the timeline, like minimum, it is like three months once you declare minimum three months it will be declared and that is told where that is told in another act disturbed areas special courts act 1976 okay this also you please can ask and then state government can suggest whether the aspa is required to be enforced or not meaning suppose center is not even looking at the place but state feels like I, we need aspa after here they can request for it okay now under section 3 now the controversy which today's uh, the question mains question which i showed you like what is the provisions which activists are opposing these are the provisions section 3 section 4 and section 7 that is one is the center can declare any area without the consent of the state also it's not like that state request okay opposite also state request center can even reject telling like half spice not required else state may not even request and still center can tell it is needed it's a disturbed area so any either way center has the higher power so that uh, is the first reason of opposition then section 4 is that the authorized officer can open fire at any individual which can even result in death okay that means you are telling arrest without a warrant and search and seize without uh, any warrant everything you can do without warrant so this also uh, the activist don't like it okay they tell some permission should be there some rule should be there not like you open fire at anyone okay so that is second one and third one again the same thing Section 7, executive permission uh, from the center or state, meaning if you want to now prosecute any army officer, you felt like he did something out of the way, he is simply misusing the power. You cannot simply go give case or something. You have to take special permission from the center or state. They have to approve. Then only uh, proceedings will be done against this person. So, these three sections, 3, 4, 7, uh, they are opposing. Okay. So, this is like equivalent to you could have studied the uh, Rowlett Act and all. Rowlett Act uh, after which Jalianwala Bhaga happened. Okay. It is also called the Black Act 1919. 
okay after that only jalian wala bag happened in april uh, 14 time something so this and all like you should be able to relate okay when you're studying current affair i am talking polity when i'm talking polity i'm taking you to history when i'm talking history sometimes we will tell the geographical areas so everything if you don't relate then you will not clear upsc okay you have to be that aspirant who connects everything with everything there is no shortcut there is no uh, mantra or something that this coaching class will give you notes and you study and you will by heart it's not like that you yourself should have that interest to link all this together okay because that is what in the exam paper it will reflect in the exam paper it's not like they will ask to write the advantage of something it's that is 12th standard level exam okay here they will ask very complicated thing what is what is happening what who is opposing what is the provision that time the economical political social international uh, cultural any kind of dimension if you bring in or more dimension you bring in you get more marks okay and that comes only when you practice it while studying itself don't think i'll study separately 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 and the exam hall i'll join that will not happen while studying itself try interlinking everything okay try to know everything about this country that is enough to clear upsc have interest in everything have interest in everything happening in this country and outside you will automatically pass the exam so now the controversy as i told what is the root uh, i told you three sections what is the summary of that human rights violation okay extraordinary powers are there with the armed forces so they feel like fake encounters are happening other violations are happening in disturbed area so this indefinite imposition also at some states like i told you like 27 years in meghalaya in nagaland it's there since many years jammu and kashmir many years it was there so this and all indefinitely is the that is a controversy now supreme court have told about this like what they have told so up, they upheld the constitutionality of afspa in a 98 judgment telling like it is needed okay a sua moto declaration can be made by the central government however it is desirable that the state government can should be consulted okay meaning again a uh, optional thing only if you it's better if you consult the state but again state central government has the power that supreme court has upheld in the 1998 judgment okay so this is the act uh, sorry the judgment naga people movement of human right versus union of india this and all in your exam if supreme court stand point uh, if they ask you have to write all this and then declaration has to be for a limited duration and there should be a periodic review every 6 months okay not like you extend 6 months 6 months 6 months like unlimited it should not go there should be a proper uh, review whether it's need or not not like uh, central alone dis- keep deciding then exercising the power the authorized officer should use minimal force the meaning at the last moment just because you are given freedom doesn't mean you go and shoot everyone as the last resort you should use the this thing before that you can use maybe tear gas or the lathi charge or whatever you usually do that you can do don't use weapons at the a uh, very first uh, option okay and then recommendation this also upsc can ask there is this justin uh, bp jeevan reddy uh, commission 2004 they told that aspa should be repealed okay opposite to what supreme court told it should be repealed and it should be there but it should be already we have an act called unlawful uh, prevention act uap act is there inside that you add as a clause okay where organized crime terrorism everything you deal with go and put it there don't make this aspa a special one and then Uh, the uh, grievance cell should be set up in each district meaning if uh, armed forces are doing something misuse or something wrong you should have a, s- a place where you can go and tell your grievances or your complaints okay then another second arc okay second arc's uh, uh, report fifth report came on public order there also they told repeal the afspa okay but these are not implemented Uh, to you know because even now it is there and that is the news today the manipur violence we have been showing you we have made separate video also on that so there from october they are telling six more months we are extending okay six more months we are extending but the problem here is not there problem is they have not put the entire manipur they have put disturbed area which i told the notifying notifying of disturbed area by the center they have told or the state state itself has issued a notification to extend this law so they told every place except 19 police stations Uh, in the imphal valley you know manipur issue was that there is a state there is a valley in the center and surrounding it is hills okay so hill area there is cookies and in the valley area there is methis and both are encroaching each other's place and uh, reservation issues there many issues it's a multi faceted problem it's not one problem so they are fighting they are uh, burning places like women are being uh, nakedly paraded many many things are bad bad things are happening there so because maithi is the larger vote bank or larger uh, majority and all you cannot displease or disappoint maithis so that is why maithi who lives in the valleys their area most of the areas are not under afspa but the other areas the hilly areas and the forest areas that is under afspa so that now again is going to get problem only okay so that the author did not like it and that is why uh, this absence of law 
in certain places is actually uh, you are creating more violence you are going to uh, enhance the violence or uh, incite more violence okay so this one in recent months as i told you excluded that is not liked by the author nothing else is there in today's article they just extended it to six months and author did not like it okay so again government's partisan conduct meaning you are showing partition and then uh, detailed assessment should be done in the ground level and then only you should decide such things and uh, the people there have hostility towards the Assam rifles who are posted there you know the other armed forces like uh, uh, the Sahastra Simabal is there Assam rifles is there the uh, uh, border security force is there each play each people has different different areas where they control okay ITBP is there whereas uh, the Tibet uh, border so like that we have uh, this side in the eastern side we have the Assam rifle so their people are against that also the hatred towards army will increase when you keep imposing this so center should not delay any further a serious initiative to bring about reconciliation between the two community again arbitration kind of thing you bring a meeting and then solve it okay so this is the news item is very less but I taught you all the static part of it so it's history timeline uh, the controversies the positive side the negative side the clauses of this thing then the judgments of Supreme Court then the uh, recommendation of the committees okay more than this nothing is there to study on ASPA. I have taught you everything. Now just follow current affairs and keep adding in your notes wherever you are making. Okay. Now the next article whether we need more women in police forces like 33 percentage okay because there are two sides of it many people tell uh, you bring everywhere don't force that uh, thing like 33 percent 33 percent because police job means you will have to like physically you know whatever you tell equality or whatever physically how much man can run or how much man can lift a weight or something that that much woman cannot do okay in their category they can do you would have seen in olympics asian games everywhere how much weight these people have to take in uh, any uh, weighing or this any weightlifting that is not the weight these people have to take woman has to take so that common sense if you apply everywhere you should not try to bring 50 percent equality and these things and all because the job nature is like that okay when it's more physical job when it's more you have to run or chase and these things and all the woman uh, need not be 50 50 percent but now the author is asking 33 percentage uh, do we need or not because in a parliament we are bringing so that in and around some clauses some stats are there like how much police is there now how much woman police is there so your exam point of view you can use that data okay which i'll explain in uh, detail okay so uh, in a few years time you know women's uh, this thing will come it's not implemented don't think like a woman like 2024 election it is going to be 33 percentage woman okay this i already explained uh, there is a process like first thing is census our census is not done in 2021 so you don't know the full population without knowing the population how will you categorize in categorize into different constituencies that categorizing process is called delimitation so one is census take the count of full population then is delimitation where you break it into constituencies and tell okay in kerala state okay this much this much constituency See, this much this much voting polling booth is there so each place one one mla or one one mp that that decision is called delimitation as of now our delimitation is already done and frozen till 2026 as per the uh, laws and extensions and all till that time like this much this much is the constituency is already decided so now government has already told so because of that after 2024 election gets over then only we will do the census because now we don't have the time and capacity also to do it so census we will do delimitation will do and when is the next general election 2029 so 2029 time 33 percent will be there but in case any of this delays census or delimitation then maybe we'll have to wait for one more election by 2034 only election it will it can happen so uh, their goal to like by 15 years maximum uh, women should get 33 percentage in the uh, parliament in the state assembly in the assembly legislature of the union territory where uh, assembly is there so everywhere wherever uh, parliamentarians or mlas are there their women will have 33 percentage but maximum 15 years you should implement it at any cost okay so uh, this one SCST reservation that also will continue and uh, then uh, the count if you take the current Lok Sabha is about 14.4 percentage the women uh, members of parliament and uh, when we got independent in the first that time it was only 4.9 percent so we have just like 10 percent increase has happened in the last 75 years now we are trying to like kind of double it or even more than that 33 percentage we are trying to do so as I said this is all I explained earlier you do uh, like 2029 else it will become 2034 okay I have explained that so now there is no direct link between uh, how many legislatures are there or how many women is there meaning based on that there is nothing extra going to happen like these many bills will get passed or these many is there but as a democracy we should see to it that our institutions uh, everywhere a woman should get their uh, fair uh, representation okay so that is the intention of the parliament now the discussion is whether this thing we should go into police or not 33 percentage in uh, states okay so now if you see current situation there are states which have 30 percent 33 percentage women already i think in bihar and all it is the highest that uh, i will tell you the stats also and uh, 
uh, there are other states where there is like 10 percentage or even 5 percentage or there is no woman itself that also is there and then what happens is proper recruitment is not there like specifically like women police officers such recruitment is not happening okay and proper merging of women and this thing that is also not happening or quota is not assigned that nothing is happening as like to promote women uh, this thing okay so uh, whenever this SCST OBC category which is reserved when their vacancy come meaning it's not getting filled that year maybe that many SCST OBC did not come and or pass the exam or whatever that gap you are filling women that is what is done in most of the states okay that is what is written here so now in some states, it's restricted like strictly 10 percentage women, 90 percent men. And then, uh, as I told, there is no proper recruitment for them. Then there's the data, which is like by this uh, Bureau of Police Research and Development, BPRD. Okay, try to find some static thing about that BPRD when it was set up and detail, detail. Just Google, you will get the Wikipedia page. Just basic you read. Okay, that is your homework. So, BPRD has a publication, Data on Police Organizations. So, they told the total available strength of the state police increased. Okay by 7.48 percentage in the last five years that is 2017 to 2021 20, data they are taking 19 lakh to 20 lakh it increased sanctioned is even more sanctioned is actually 24 lakh and 26 lakh but that time 19 lakh and now 20 lakh and the woman now if you take it has increased from 1 lakh 40 thousand to 2 lakh 17 thousand that is from 7.8 percentage to 10.4 percentage this is as of 2021 as of 2021 10.47% uh, of the total available force is uh, women. Okay, police force is women as of now, generally if you take the country wise. But again, after this they did not publish. Okay, this BPRD did not publish this. But Amit Shah, Home Minister, he uh, came in the Raj Sabha and told in February 2023 that we have the data, it will publish soon and women is now increased again. 11.7% of the total state police force is women. So this data you can use because it's quoted by the Home Minister itself. Now state wise if you take. Uh, Kerala, Mizoram, Goa, they don't have any policy like this much, this much percentage should be there or they do not restrict also, they do not keep uh, any high end also. So, they average they have 6 to 11 percentage police, okay, women police. Bihar has 35 percentage reservation for women, 3 percentage for backward caste women, but the actual percentage is 17.4 percentage, okay. So, Bihar is not the highest. Highest if you see, uh, Chandigarh has the maximum percentage, 22 percent in Chandigarh is women, okay. Jammu and Kashmir, minimum 3.3 percentage. Himachal Pradesh uh, notification is there 20 percent is uh, vacancies constable is filled by women okay so at least a rough idea of three four example states if you have you can use in your this thing okay Chandigarh like high is there Jammu and Kashmir low is there then Bihar Kerala you can tell like they don't have the policy but still they have so whatever is there you just note it down and then many states do not have a recruitment board itself without recruitment board how will you recruit uh, the people now we are assuming assuming the attrition rate meaning how many are leaving the service and how many are uh, getting sanctioned as intake or outgoing intake generally if you take it would take at least 20 years to make the woman uh, representation increase from 10 percent to 30 percent as per the current rate so you have to do some provisions or legal things so that it actually happens that is what the author is telling so now we will see some polity part uh, crime data, this thing right, the criminal law, crime, criminal procedure, where is this? In the seventh schedule, we have union list, state list, concurrent list, meaning who has the power now to make law? Okay, actually criminal law and criminal procedure is in the concurrent list. In the center and state can make laws on criminal law and this thing. But police, police as a subject is a state subject. So state has to make laws, not the center. Okay, this basic difference you should know, UPSC will ask you this. Police is a state law, state list item in the seventh schedule and the criminal law and criminal procedure is a concurrent list item. So now central government has already done many amendments. Okay, they have done like modernization of police force you would have seen in the last many years. Most of the police stations are not the what you have in your mind or what you see in web series, latest web series you can see it is more modernized, it is more like computerized uh, with fingerprint. Many, many many things are being added and it is modernized like in, we have in foreign countries. But it will take time because India is a big country, everywhere you cannot do in one day. So. Women related also, they are doing many things like many statements, woman itself has to uh, note it down, woman has to be accompanied when there is a woman uh, culprit uh, or a woman has to uh, do the searching of a woman like that. Many things already is being forced. Now, according to National Crimes Record uh, uh, Bureau data, okay, this also NCRB, this also is your homework, okay, that BPRD and NCRB, today itself Google and wherever you are making notes, make that basic notes when it was formed, what are the reports they publish or uh, who is its head term some basic things right that you do okay this is your homework so now 
10 percentage of the total crime defined under IPC is committed against women. They are telling what is the need to bring more women. They are telling that crimes committed 10 percentage are by women. So equally women police also you need right. Then 5.3 percentage of total arrested women arrested people in 2021 are women. So 5 percent women is arrested. 10 percent crimes are related to women. So you have, you need women and available women officers are insufficient in dealing with these cases. Other than that you need women for other also not only crime right. There is crime department and there is law and order department in police. So law and order department you need women day to day duties also you need women so everywhere you need men women equally so you have to recruit more now the poxo act is there where it is child offenses thing and all minor getting raped and all so there also the scope of women recruitment is enlarged further many people in the juvenile system and all is morely like women police officers now now uh, women it's already proved they can handle any assignment they have the capacity to do all the police duties okay so as a democratic institution we should win their trust and then increase their uh, representation this is the uh, suggestion by the author. Now, the modernization thing which I told uh, uh, from 2018-19, they have been doing like 10 percent reserve in the first year, 20 percent in the uh, next year, like that. Uh, the fund I am telling, this much, this much fund uh, MHA was giving based on how much you do, meaning 10 percent fund will be given. If you do something good thing in your police station modernizing, you will get extra 20 percent fund. Like that, slowly, slowly, lot of funds were being moved based on the work you are doing. Satisfactory level means more fund you will get. Then again, merging the woman police with the regular police, that was one reform. Establishment of police recruitment board was another reform. Then um, many states are not enthusiastic about this, so they are not implementing, so they are not getting the benefit also. They are not getting the fund also. Then the satisfaction level of family quarters, okay, the quarters which the police people get, that satisfaction level is only 30% now. That means you are not providing proper quarters to them. Then again, special grant is given to encourage the states to set up a woman desk. In every police station, woman desk should be there. But again, desk you will do. But there is again no people. There is no recruitment happening. There is no woman personnel to handle the districts. Okay. Then special provision for this uh, separate toilets for women. This also you would have noticed. Many places, uh, they didn't even build it because they never expected a woman uh, police officer to come there. Okay. Then, crash facilities for the uh, children meaning you have a small kid or something the woman can bring their child to the police station but separate room will be there for uh, the kid and the play area the feeding that, that kind of area will be there that also these are all modern reforms if upsc ask you what are the reforms which uh, government has been doing uh, to for the inclusion of women in police this is what you have to write then a uniform police act that should come okay we are like bringing uniform civil code we are thinking same like the uniform police act if you bring then full country every states will have a same law then everybody will be mandated to follow that okay so that we should uh, think we should do the uh, set up the conducive environment and the basic infrastructure which is needed okay every state should have a recruitment board special recruitment drive or campaign should happen in every state and then just as this uh, constitutional amendment of women is there some amendment in future we hope uh, for police also will come okay now the last article uh, isds investors uh, dispute related thing it is but before that there is a history to it which you should study okay recently you know g20 happened g20 happened and uh, there many things were discussed and we also taught you everything but there is something else which was mentioned wto's dispute settlement mechanism has a problem okay since 2019 you should know what is WTO? World Trade Organization. Its predecessor is uh, GATT. Okay, General Agreement on uh, Trade and Tariff. Okay, I'm just telling when world level when problems are there, you have World Bank for money, you have uh, ICJ, the Court Justice for any uh, criminal cases. Like that, we have multiple things. Like that, for trade related problems, we have GATT, which later extended to trade or, uh, services also, and then later it became WTO. 1995, I think it became WTO. Once it became WTO, in that dispute settlement, is like very smoothly it was happening. Many people, many cases were getting solved there. Okay, compared to other uh, bodies which we have, and then. They had an appellate mechanism also. That is the beauty of WTO system, which had like uh, one uh, problem will come, complaint will come, then you will establish a panel, that panel will submit a report. If you are happy with that, complaint and wins, the case will get over. But in case you are not happy, there was an appeal mechanism. Okay, so that appellate mechanism since 2019 is not happening. Okay, appellate mechanism, meaning it is getting stuck here. Somebody appeals, after that there is no appellate appeal thing going on. Why it's not going on? Because here, uh, big powers like USA and all has a uh, extra say in this. So they tell like we don't believe in this thing uh, because most of the cases are going against us. They are not in favor of this mechanism. They are telling it is biased. It is anti-Western countries. It is anti-USA and all. So they are not allowing that the appointment to happen in the appellate committee and they are not allowing it to function itself. Okay. So including India, many countries have been telling to make it function because there are, I will tell you, the data I will tell you. 
so this uh, thing this problem is there since 2019 okay so now in g20 we told by 2024 at least we should bring back that well functioning dispute settlement mechanism which is accessible to all the country okay as i told it is a two tier panel come appellate uh, body structure which is dysfunctional since 2019 because usa has blocked the appointment of its members okay and if you take the data it has issued over 493 rulings since establishment in 1995 okay and comparison if you take the icj which is the international court of justice which un's body they have done only 190 cases in since 1947 okay meaning last 70 80 years they have done only 190 cases but the other body in the last 30 years they have done 493 cases so who is doing better it is the wto so that if you block it like this it is harmful for all the country so including india everybody told by 2024 usa has to uh, solve this problem okay so now this exp this uh, expression what it is heartening it is good okay but whether it will happen or not whether it will be again one stage process or the appellate process that or not we have to wait and see okay because usa believes in dejudicialization of international trade law okay because they don't believe that it's happening anything in uh, their favor okay even trump i think everybody were uh, withdrawing all the funds because all these things functions on fund only if usa kind of power tell we will not give fund to un or wto they cannot function that is why they are helpless okay so now the future of wto appellate thing is uncertain that we understood so in that context that is wto is not our context uh, our topic now context we have another thing called investor state dispute settlement or isds meaning you know uh, bilateral investment treaties are signed like india uh, maybe korea or india japan we will sign some treaties and we invest in each other's place now there suppose some issue comes so this is not trade we are talking about we are talking about the money going in and out okay we are not buying anything all we are funding investment for something so that investment when set, uh, dispute happen we have a mechanism called investor state dispute settlement isds okay so here uh, again there are problems here okay that is why the discussion is happening so till january 2023 1257 cases has been initiated india's record if you take five cases it's gone against us adverse award four is in favor of us and many are there which are pending also okay so india's this is the experience if you have to write about isds so now isds if you see they don't have uh, appellate kind of thing they are like kind of arbitration which i taught you once okay two people have problem so either you will appoint mutually or some third person will appoint for you someone like a mediator and then you will sit and solve the problem okay so that is the arbitration uh, tribunal without an appellate okay so now hundreds of isds tribunals operating under different uh, occasions are there but problem is what same law if you take like suppose some agreement is signed between india japan that same law one arbitrator is looking at one angle another is taking it one angle meaning there is no standards there is no rules there is no uh, proper procedure in which you will come to a conclusion each arbitrator is looking at his version of it or india will read it like we meant that way japan you are reading it in the wrong way we didn't mean that so th there is no proper uniformity in this investment uh, uh, state sorry in investor state dispute settlement process so that uh, interpretation problem oppositions uh, opposite conclusion differently and the absence of an appellate uh, this thing inconsistent incoherent decisions happening legal reasoning and uh, this international investment laws are not being followed so it causes instability improbability for states and foreign investors and so completely it is a chaotic situation overall it is there a system is there but it is not working I mean wto is also there in problem this is also in problem then where will you go and settle your problems okay where will you go and solve your problems that is what the author is concerned so an appellate review mechanism if you bring same like wto had that is where usa is blocking right so here why don't you bring an appellate mechanism and here use it okay so that more uniformity will come so there should be power to uphold modify reverse the decision of the first tire okay like that that power should be given so that more coherence more consistency will come it will infuse predictability and more certainty to this isds system and it's also better than the existing systems where there is annulment proceedings okay announcement in we have already this ic sid if you know ic sid you know world bank wb world bank world bank under that world bank group they have five bodies okay they have this uh, uh, in ib uh, sorry ida development agency ibrd which is the main one okay don't think world bank is just one body world bank has five bodies in which four of them india is also part but the fifth one ic sid okay there is international center for settlement of investment dispute I mean they have a wing under world bank for this settle uh, investment dispute but india is not party to that many countries are not party to that because of certain reasons so compared to ic sid they are telling 
uh, which uh, this annulment proceedings and their procedure is not correct this uh, uh, isds which we are discussing today that has more scope and more accepted by everyone so we should work on an appellate tribunal for uh, this thing okay an appellate tribunal for uh, the I isds system so then uh, we will uh, uh, solve the issues faster this will be superior in getting a proper award meaning proper outcome and then uh, uh, discussions on creating this is going on at where at unicitral this is another unicitral this is another body united nations commission on international trade law okay there is a body called un citral they are working on this and there again they are discussing several issues like the several issues are whether we need an ad hoc appellate mechanism meaning for india japan okay a specific like case by case for that case we will set up a appellate mechanism the next one india korea happened that time we'll see that time another ad hoc setup we'll do like we do our river tribunal kaveri tribunal these things whenever issue is there that time we'll set up tribunal permanently there won't be any tribunal so so like that should we do that one or should we have a permanent standing one which is applying for everyone or what is the time frame what is the effect of the decision after appellate tribunal decision is there any more appeal is there anything so that we should these are the things which un citral is discussing okay so what is un citral that also static i will teach you okay this is a body which came in 1966 the headquarters is in vienna austria okay austria in europe vienna austria and then uh, through its several conventions legislative guides everything they provide a valuable platform for countries to debate examine adopt all the international uh, things related to the trade law okay and then india is one of the earliest okay it's not only eight country that is actually outdated data uh, i think now more than i will show you that also now more than um, it started with 29 states expanded to 36 countries then to 60 actually in 2019 and before if you take the data it will be very less countries but 2019 onwards almost every continent they started adding country you can see the years here 2019 22 will be like more number of countries added okay so in every continent you see africa asia europe north america oceania south america everywhere uh, one of the other countries there including last one venezuela in uh, south america okay so these uh, many countries are there as part of this uh, 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 unicitral okay unicitral membership i am telling you and the basic details you can again pause and read this or it's a wikipedia's first paragraph always when you have confusion about a date any body no read the wikipedia's first paragraph don't read the full detail because they'll give lot of history and timeline that we will teach you in a simpler way but the basic one liner what is the number of members or uh, the uh, year formed the headquarters that that will be anyway correct only in that so that is the thing now again india related is there any news related to U un citral is um 9 2019 the ministry of corporate affairs suggested that uh, we should adopt this un citral has many laws okay under that not only investment settlement uh, there are many laws so cross border related insolvency we should adopt and we adopted that so that one uh, what are what is the provisions under that as a static part i am teaching you like it is uh, related to direct access to foreign insolvency professionals uh, then recognition of foreign proceedings and the provision to remedies cooperation between domestic and foreign courts and domestic and foreign insolvency people mean just a mutual cooperation between everyone these are the principles mentioned in the model law of unicitral and that we adopted meaning we will also follow that so coordination between two or more concurrent insolvency proceedings in different countries so wherever inter water uh, cross border insolvency problem is there money related problem is there anybody take the money and run away these kind of things are not we followed the unicitral model uh, 2019 okay so that reason i just showed you the certain uh, static part of it now we'll go back to the last slide of that uh, same article that uh, india what is india stand on this new I isds which you are discussing okay we discussed everything now isds india's thing author is telling india should take a stand don't do this uh, non alignment movement kind of thing we are not there we are not here we cannot tell against usa we cannot tell support of usa don't do that you have to take a stand because it will support india's interest only there are many pending cases in wto also which now anyway wto is not getting repaired so the, here you should make a formal statement you should tell that we need for our uh, bit bilateral investment treaties and all and in that bilateral investment we have an article 29 where we are kind of supporting isds mechanism only so why not formally tell it in public tell that we need it okay so like that uh, in the negotiation which we do in european union we are doing a new treaty there also you should strictly tell that we need an appellate mechanism in isds because wto thing is not getting fixed so we need a rule based global order we should support appellate review and greater confidence to states and investors it will be and then for the same reason india should push for the restoration of wto also meaning this also do that also do at least something will get approved and something will be uh, coming into a uh, place okay so this is the september 30s article now the october 2 okay october 1 sunday there is no editorial october 2 is going to be even much more interesting because too much static thing is there okay it was gandhi jayanti so it is gandhi jayanti today so 
Ambedkar uh, versus Gandhi, which mains question came, okay, 2017 or something, main question came. That mains question, then many, many prelims fact about Gandhi, which last year also one question came, songs of the prison is written by whom? It is by Mahatma Gandhi. So, this is all in every book you won't get, but I will teach you many things, okay. So, this uh, episode, just wait for it and then uh, current affair packages and all the uh, test series packs, everything, just come and tell uh, what you need in WhatsApp and uh, i'll uh, get back to you okay so instagram whatsapp wherever you want you can message me and we'll discuss further so thank you and have a nice day